stocks, bonds, ETFs, straight out of downtown Chicago. This is Zach's Market Edge. Welcome to Zach's Market Edge, the podcast about investing in your life. I'm your host, Tracy Reinick, and this week I'm joined by Zach's stock strategist, Brian Bolin, who is also editor of the Game Changers portfolio and Stocks Under 10. And we're going to discuss a topic that has been in the news a lot the last couple of days, and I know it's of interest to both Brian and myself, and that is Warren Buffett. He held the annual Berkshire meeting in Omaha, the big pilgrimage when everyone goes to the heartland from the coast and, uh, you know, gets to see him and Charlie Munger up on the stage for hours answering questions. The exalted lords that they are. That's right. Um, Warren is now 85. I don't know how old Charlie is. He's 385. He's like yeah. yeah, he's about 90, I think. And then they were on CNBC for several hours the next day. They always Riveting. do that afterwards. <laughs> yes, several hours with Bill Gates. They have to bring him on, maybe to spice it up. I what don't know. What was Becky wearing? She she's the normal. Okay, she had normal. black okay, with the good. skirt. Yeah, yeah. She Becky's always there. Becky Quick from CNBC, and um, I did watch some of that. I didn't. I didn't. You know, I didn't attend the Berkshire Hathaway <laughs> meeting. I'm not a shareholder. I used to be, but I sold those oh shares years ago Thank because the they were going nowhere. Yeah. Right. Oh. Although I did look it up lately and just out of curiosity to see how well they've been doing. And the B shares, which is what the lowlier people can right. afford. The plebs. The, right. Um, those are up 81% over the last five years comparing to the S&P 500, which is at 53.9. So they are they are beating the, the S&P these days, yeah, but you get so no dividend there. No divvy. Oh, that always annoyed I, I think me. that's kind of the, the thing, you know, I, I don't want to jump the gun on everything that we're going to talk about here, but I think that's like the whole strategy that uh, that uh, Mr. Buffett would, would need and the thing that he gives to everybody that makes it available for the common person, that $1,000 price, right. you know, share thing has no dividend, is the absolute thing that built him, but no, not for you. Well, yeah, that's the interesting thing. Uh, um, on the parts I did see them discussing, of course, they talked about their holdings, which are, you know, IBM, Wells Fargo, American Express, he's held for like 30 or 40 years, Coca-Cola, they all pay dividends. And they were talking about IBM, oh, it's got that dividend, it's now 3.7% yield, um, great. You know, that's what I'm getting for owning Berkshire. I'm getting this, you know, these big cap, slow growth. I looked up IBM's, you know, earnings expected to decline 9% this year and up only 3% next year. They kept going on about, oh, the dividend. And for, for Buffett, who bought some of these, like I said, 30 or 40 years ago, he's getting a big dividend yield off of that those original purchases. Right. But... I know everybody listens to Mr. Buffett and and to some extent Mr. Munger. I have in the past. I've you know read articles. I've read books about Warren Buffett and his investing strategies, which I still oh gee shucks. I know I still like some of what he says about the long term investment, but his actual investing picks now. I don't think anyone should be listening to, you know, I don't think I should be running out and buying IBM or American Express. Yeah, I I, I think I'm going to go ahead and launch it right here, okay. Tracy. I've uh, been All waiting right. for some time, for so <laughs> many years, but Warren Buffett has been the scourge of the investment world for so many people for uh, decades. I know. You know he, he, I mean, it's an absolute con job that the, uh, the American public has just bought in hook, line, sinker, rod reel boat the whole lake they've bought the whole thing um you know what everyone has done is say let's let's act and 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 have warren buffett be our role model but the fact is is that you know warren you know did it in a different time and what he did you know it, it, over his time he did great right okay? and i'm not taking away from the success that he had but right. you can't model yourself to do what he did today the one thing that has been constant uh, in the stock market for the last, you know, 100 years is constant change. So the things that work for him will not likely work for you. Um, and, you know, his whole philosophy of, you know, buy and hold forever. Right. You know, I think we, we've summarily dismissed that as something that just can't happen over the last, you know, even eight years. You can't buy and hold forever and expect that these names, you know, of today are going to be around even 15 or 20 years later. I mean, it's just highly unlikely. The thing is, it worked for him in his time, and and I'll go into some of the the 
even more negative feelings <laughs> that I have for him. But you can't model yourself after Warren Buffett. Thinking like, okay, this guy just knows everything because at one time he did really well mm. and great for that. But that one time is now over. And, you know, reaching that, taking that philosophy and extending it through to the present day just does not work. I feel like we should be modeling him as he was in like the 70s um, and, and, and the type of companies he bought them because Berkshire was much smaller. When he has less to invest, he's able to buy the smaller, more nimble companies. He doesn't have to buy these, you know, really large cap, old, whatever mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, because it's so much smaller. So I do feel like I can take some of what his philosophy is from back right. then and apply it to today, but not follow his philosophy from today. Right. Okay. So that's, <laughs> that makes that's, any sense. I know I, I get you with that, but, uh, here's one thing. So I, I just want to, like, I, I made a few notes here that I, and okay. this, this fits in perfect here because, uh, over the weekend, uh, Mr. Buffett had tough words for, uh, Mr. Michael Pearson who was the CEO of, of Valiant, you know, VRX. Yes, he did. And, and, you know, that stock was, you know, $277. And now it's, you know, it was down to 27 recently. So, you know, 90% uh, haircut there. Yeah. Normally haircuts aren't as big as 90%, <laughs> no. but I mean, that's very hard. But let's take a look at, you know, Berkshire versus VRX. I mean, they're both essentially the same thing. They're roll-ups. You right. know, they're buying businesses. That's right. what they do. Big that's how, you know, they're yeah. just... Valiant's buying up all the biotechs and, and, and healthcare companies, you know, all these things. And the idea of a roll-up works great as long as it's working. And for that to happen, the stock has to keep going up and earnings have to continue. You continue to use your stock as your currency, that sort of thing. Uh, and that that's great when it works. And it's been right. working for Berkshire. If you think about the businesses they have, you know, the, the Geico, the uh, insurance. Sure. Seize you, Candy. Yes. Yeah, Dairy Queen. <laughs> well, Seize Candy and Dairy Queen a little smaller, but think right, about like are. the railroads. Right. Uh, they bought utilities. Huge railroad. You know, yeah. uh, these businesses are, he's just rolling these all up into one big pile. And that's it's right. like, you know, I, and I get the idea of the vertical integration between, you know, the railroads and, and the utilities and you know, a little bit on the insurance side and things like yeah. that. But, and there's opportunities in and around there and the other items that they hold. But at the end of the day, this is it's a roll up. Uh, yeah, you know, it is. And just because Berkshire That's had why I sold it. Yeah. <laughs> just because uh, Valiant, you know, had pricing power and they, you know, really squeezed everything and they possibly pushed everything higher in, in terms of prices and, and really made a lot of money doing that in a very short amount of time doesn't mean that, you know, that their roll up is bad and your roll up is good. Right. You know. Um so when we're talking about like the acquisitions that that a young Buffett would make, and you you look at it today, you know, wasn't Michael Pearson basically a right. young Buffett? He's just buying big names. He's buying billion dollar companies. You know, if you just bring it, dial it down to buy, you know, buy the two hundred million dollar companies instead, you're doing the exact same thing. And I guess my idea here, or my point in general, is that you can't do the Warren Buffett strategy because it worked for him. At the time, it it did, but now it doesn't work like that anymore. Okay, you know, you don't see Facebook and, and let, let's call uh, you know Mark Zuckerberg, you know, one of the great investors, if you will, of the time. You know, you don't see him just constantly out there buying big, big, huge monster names. I mean, right? You did buy the Instagram and you did buy the the WhatsApp, but you know, we haven't heard anything of a, of a mega huge acquisition from them in a long time. So it's not necessarily all about the roll up, all about buying and, and slapping pieces parts on to the to make something better. What do you think about um when Buffett's always asked at these meetings and on these interviews about his views on th- the economy in general? Do you think he has any idea like about what's happening out there? Because I, I bring this up because a lot of people were quoting over the weekend. He got asked about the housing market because Berkshire does own some home builders and things like that. And he said, quote, I don't see a nationwide bubble in real estate at all, unquote. But in 2010, I looked this up because I wondered what he thought about the last bubble we had. Did he call that one? Right. Did he see it at all? And I looked it up and he actually gave testimony before the Financial Crisis Inquiry Commission in New York City. This was in June 2010 about the bubbles mm-hmm. because of his investments in Wells Fargo and all of that. And um, he basically missed the housing bubble the last time. And he said, quote, I didn't think home prices could pop like they did, unquote. And then he also admitted that he basically not missed, but 
miscalled the internet bubble of the 1990s, saying that it went up further along than he thought it would. So I'm reading all this going, why are we listening to him talk about how there's no bubble at all nationwide about the housing market? Why is this the big headline when he's never gotten that thing right ever? Yeah, you know, I, you can give him a little bit of credit for being, you know, sticking with it, sticking in the market for as long as he has and holding these investments for a very long time. The buy and hold part you know, oh, yeah. of that philosophy, the hardest part of buy and hold is holding. That's right. You know, because you want to take those gains. You want to go after something sexy and, and beat your, your number from the other year. But if you just hold on for decades, right. you know, because <laughs> you know, I mean, let's that face is it, his philosophy. A lot of people do have decades left to live. It's right. just a lot of people don't use decades in their time horizon for their investments. Right. You know, if you did that. Should you? you? Should we all? Yes and no. Okay. You know, uh, to some degree, obviously, in your large cap uh, ideas, maybe decades, you know, are the things that work. But in the smaller cap, the things that you, you know, want to see good explosive growth in the near term, you know, certainly not. Yeah. You know, will Facebook be around for decades? I don't know. Uh, will Twitter be around for decades? You know, we're hitting, you know, all time lows right here. It is something that we thought was destined for greatness. Right. You know, totally wrong. So who knows uh, what the right thing is? Uh, you know, okay. only hindsight tells you. He tends to like companies that have like really strong brands, consumer oriented, things that he does believe will be around for decades, right. like the Dairy Queens of the world. They are still here. Um, do you see any, you know, companies now that, you know, investors who don't really want to follow what Warren's doing with the IBMs of the world, <laughs> but kind of want to follow that other philosophy of his about picking the brands or are is there anything on your horizon that you know, would kind of fit in there? I'm, I'm against I'm against Warren Buffett in almost everything. Okay, that so he you does. don't even follow the, that. Yeah, philosophy. the only thing that I agree with Warren Buffett is breathe oxygen. And okay. other than that, I think everything that he does is wrong and evil. Okay, I'm a little bit <laughs> thinking maybe a little bit of a hyperbole there, but <laughs> so uh, you will not is, be attending. He, yeah. You will not be watching the Omaha meetings because no. I think they they live. Yeah. Had it on live this time, I live streaming. Yeah, I won't ever watch it. Uh, okay. You know, him and, and him talking of the weapons of financial mass destruction. Yeah. You know, and it was 100% a case of don't you use this and don't you do that. But, it, you know, in behind the scenes, he's doing all of that and using all of that. You know, so it's, yeah. it, it's the old, you know, do as I say, don't do as I do. And then I don't even want to get into this maybe for another day, the podcast for, for Warren, but, you know, him and the, <laughs> in the, the mobile homes business, right? you know, which is just the most financial predatory thing in the world. And that is basically all him, yeah. you know, and almost nobody else. So, and, and, you know, from soup to nuts, you know, from the, the, the home manufacturing to the loans, to the insurance, to every aspect of it, he has his filthy fingers in that pie. And I, you know, I know that the American dream has been bought and sold to everybody for a very long time you have to own, but the mobile home industry is just an absolute, you know, tar pit of destruction of wealth for everyone except for Warren Buffett, who has made right, the manufacturers. You know, untold, untold billions uh, from that. Um, okay. So I, I, everything that he, he's about, I'm against. Uh, that said... You know, I understand the, the, the power of dividends over decades. You right. Know? So if you have the decade time horizon and, and you want that large cap name, you know, go with the dividend payers. You know, yeah. the things that Johnson & Johnson is definitely not going to go away over the next 20 years. Right. You know, I, I don't know what dividend they pay. I'm sure that they pay a it's minor one, yeah. reinvest those dividends. And over a 20-year time horizon, I would imagine you're going to be just fine, you know, if you have 20 years yeah, uh, I saw a to invest to, right, you know, exactly. time horizon to, to get your money out to be able to retire on. Yeah, I saw a tweet that said, um, and I don't know if this is accurate, but it sounded pretty good to me, that um, because he's owned American Express so long, that original dividend is now returning something like 400% or something because he bought it at like 30 cents a share way right, back in the right. 70s. So when, you, when you've when you made all this money on your money, it right. doesn't make sense to even sell it at that point. Right. And then it's just, it's what else would you do would give you what kind of return as right. compared to what you have. And when you have that multi-decade philosophy, uh, that can work. But again, you get okay. into that that hard part of that equation. The holding is the hardest part of buy and hold. That's right. Uh, you know, other stuff, you know, if, if you were anti-Warren Buffett, uh, you would look at these uh, companies that are doing the, the disintermediation, you know, 
these things that are breaking down the brands, the things that are destroying the financials. You know, we saw the, the game big, changer type, the game changer type philosophy. You know, we're going to shake up the world here, and this is going to be a lot different. So would that be like the because he likes the banks and the big financials? So that would be like maybe these little lending companies. Do you have yeah. any picks in there? You that know, you I like? you know I, I uh, one of them uh, blew up today for the Uh-oh. most part. On deck uh, capital O N D C is is down some thirty five percent of. Uh, you know, I think we after about doing that. earnings, uh, lending club is uh, oh, is is one that's in that same vein. Uh, I, I'm getting I'm more negative on that one now, uh, just because okay. that whole that whole specter is going to be painted with a broad brush right here off of the uh, the O and D C. Something to keep on the numbers. radar. Yeah, something to keep investors. on the radar down the road. But uh, just the uh, the idea, the disintermediation that's happening. You know, the, uh, is Uber the type of thing that Warren Buffett would invest in? And you know, most likely right. not. No. You know, because it's a small service and it's worldwide and it's little tiny little bits. But that that's the type of thing that excites me. You know, I like the Uber. I like that idea. I did see uh, questions asked of him and Charlie Munger about the autonomous car because they own Geico and the big car insurance. Mm-hmm. But if we have self driving cars, you know, you might not need car insurance at that right. point. Right. So what does that mean? And um Charlie Munger had kind of a a response to that. He said, you know, they're okay with owning some of the companies that might be disrupted, I guess is the word you would use, because it will take years to disrupt. But in their earlier years, they used to own um, an encyclopedia company that made a ton of money for them. This Mm -hmm. is like way back in the day. And then Bill Gates, when Microsoft came out, they offered that free encyclopedia on their software. I don't know if you remember that. Like you could Mm -hmm. click on it. It was before the internet, really, but it was embedded. The in there. Sure, yeah, yeah, exactly. And um, that basically started the crushing of the encyclopedia business, right. and then the internet really crushed it down. So he used that as an example. See, we survived that, but he didn't really give any kind of, you know, yeah. Geico's a little bit different than, you know, than a smaller. Did they really survive that? I think I he mean, said it was like $50 million it. business. Like Geico is huge. Right. So there is no real answer about what happens if insurance companies. So there is. There is still a danger to some of these businesses. And and clearly, you know, does Charlie Munger fully understand the adoption rate uh, that people are going to have on these things and the demand consumers are going to have at one point for these self-driving vehicles? I mean, I know that makes these super long trips, you know, incredibly worthwhile. Like, say, if I'm driving from Chicago to to Cleveland or or to St. Louis or something like that, Cincinnati, you know, I've got five hours on the road. And if I have an autonomous driving car, I can get a lot of stuff done over that time. And basically, I don't need we, to take the Greyhound but, <laughs> either, the depending Greyhound on the cost. Done, you or know, Amtrak. Maybe Amtrak. Maybe some, yeah. you know, airlines, airlines. get hurt yeah. uh, on the on the on the you know the long run trips or the short run trips for the airlines. But yeah, uh, at the end of the day, when the consumers start demanding these things, you know, that's you know, in, in watching markets over the years, you, you hear the billionaires talk, and it, one of the very smartest billionaires that I saw said, you know. They don't invest because people or because prices are low or because of you know location loca- that that isn't it like in real estate it isn't location 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 it's it's timing 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 and we invest and and do something if there's demand and when there's demand you can take advantage of things you can you know give that product and then you yeah. can have pricing power along the way as you as you refine it and build it better so you know when there is substantial demand. That's when things are going to change. And when you see that these types of products can come out on reasonable prices and, and have this sort of thing where you could, you know, I could I could basically live in Cleveland and, and commute to Zach's and, right. and get work done or, you know, maybe maybe not that far. Well, but that's a little, it's yeah. a little extreme. <laughs> I could be there, you know, every other weekend. You could be in weekend. Milwaukee. Yeah, I could easily be in Milwaukee <laughs> yeah. or someplace, yeah. you know, deep into Wisconsin. Right. Uh, uh, and, you know, have a, a lot of space and, and enjoy life a little bit differently. Right. Uh, you know, that sort of thing will, will drive demand. And, you know, does Charlie uh, or Warren fully grasp that and how quickly things change today as opposed to how they have over the last, you know, 15, right. 20 years? Okay. Um, what Do you have the ticker for On Deck Capital? O-N-D-K. Okay. I'm pretty sure is On Deck. What about L- Lending Club? And Lending Club is L-C. Okay. And I had a couple of picks that are kind of in the Buffett strain um, these aren't the disruptors necessarily, but a couple that people might be interested in that aren't the big caps if they're going to stay away from those big dividend players. Um, I like Amplify Brands. Their ticker is B-E-T-R. They just reported the 
Nobody likes the report, but uh, they make Skinny Pop popcorn. Everybody knows that brand. It's got. I've even started eating it. It's like yeah. the healthy snack food. So, and it, that's it, the in thing now. When you open it, it does smell like you've just uh, you've you've walked into a movie theater. I it know. smells incredible, and you think like they had already popped popcorn. You know, right. Like how could I, I don't that be really good? want that, right? Because right. that's got to be stale sitting in yeah. that bag, and, and I can just get the microwave stuff, and it's right, right there. But I burn the microwave stuff, so oh. I don't know. <laughs> the popcorn. <laughs> It's always been a mystery to me, but uh, yeah. obviously, you know that it, it's doing well. I see the it one thing that I see about yeah about BETR is that I see a sequential revenue growth for them throughout the year. Yeah, and in terms of aggressive growth, that's something that I always look for. That's my kind of first litmus test. If I see that, uh, there's a good chance that earnings will continue to grow along with sequential revenue growth. So uh, they have it. Uh, I've looked at the numbers yeah. for the for the analyst models uh, and. To me, the whole thing looks good. I think the report was okay. Yeah, me too. You know, a little, little light on gross margins, but right. uh, for the most part, it was in line with what the street wanted. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, there's a lot of whispers out there that they, they were going to beat. Uh, right. And I think that's kind, a of, lot uh, built in. kind of the problem there. Okay. Um, another one that I like that's on the financial side, I'm staying away from those big mega cap ba- banks, but I do like the regional banks, and I really like the Bank of the Ozarks. It's in Arkansas. They have about a $3.6 billion market cap. They do pay a dividend, 1.5%. Um, they're kind of staying away from the oil and gas debacle so far. They're you know more focused on the Atlanta region and over there, so they didn't get hung up in as many of the bad loans. So they already reported earnings were good again. They haven't they haven't missed in five years. That's good so, small conservative banks. And a yeah. shout out to Todd Bunton who goes to the Ozarks. That's right. He he loves it <laughs> down there. I was telling him, did you go to the bank of the Ozarks? And he looks at me like I'm crazy. Uh, <laughs> vacations in the Ozarks where I don't think the Bank of the Ozarks serves anything in the Ozarks. No, it, it does. It's in Missouri, isn't it? No, it's in Arkansas. Oh. No, the no they're See? in Arkansas. See, my geography grades were no one here D's knows anything. Yeah, I took them to mean doing fine. Yeah, um, and another one that I like is um, Snap On. Their ticker is SNA, and they've been in business since the 1930s. Wisconsin based, so Midwest, good Midwest company. They make power tools and like diagnostic tools and all that stuff for the auto industry. So if you own an auto shop and you need to you know, have any kind of tool to fix the car and all of that. Right. They do all that. They do some health and medical tools too, I believe. Dave Bartosiak, you're probably dreaming about That's right. He would love it. He would love Snap On. They also haven't missed in five years. I I like those kind of companies. They have a $9 billion market cap, so they're a little bit bigger than some of these others. And speaking of five years, that's how long Eric Dutram has worked here. Now I've talked to uh, Todd, Dave, Eric, and Jeremy. I'm just going to throw him in there. And Nina. And Kevin, what about so Cooker? now, uh, yeah. Kevin, I, uh, yeah, there we go. Okay. I've, I've got everybody. You've mentioned everyone who's Everyone gets here. a shout out. Okay, that's nice. Um, you can read all of these people's articles on Zax.com. Uh, you can also listen to our other podcasts on SoundCloud.com and on iTunes. I guess we had a little bit of snafu on iTunes. We weren't we weren't showing up there for some reason or something. That's been fixed. No, don't panic. Sweet. We are still panicking. on iTunes. We're on the Echo, whatever that one is. I forget. But if you're if you're on the Echo, try to summon us on it. I guess no one's been able to figure it out yet. Like, tune in. Tune in. I've been told tune by Danny in. here. It's on tune in. Echo. So on tune try in. to summon us and send me a tweet if you if it works. Because I'm not I sure feel what's like, happening. See now I feel like Terry Ruffalo, where people are talking about new technologies, and I'm just going, yeah, tune in. Yeah. Then tune yeah. into our podcast. I don't think we're on Google Play yet, are we? <laughs> are we on Google Play? I don't think so. We're going to try to get on there. We're so expanding anyone with our boundaries. Android, yeah. I have an Android, so I want to listen to myself occasionally. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll try to get on oh Google Play. Oh boy, Tracy, there. That's a loaded statement right there. Yes. Um, <laughs> so we have all these sources. Listen to all our podcasts on there. There's some great information. Um, you know, and our articles are also, as I said, on Zax.com. So check us out and we'll see you again next week.